Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the modern C++ series. In this lesson, I want to talk about two of my favorite tips or my favorite tricks for designing a more stable API. Now, a more stable API is a really good thing for your development, whether that's for you yourself as a developer or the client who's going to consume and make use of the code that you're writing. So these are two of my tricks that I like to use, and usually they help you write a better API. So let's go ahead and talk about what these are. And one of them we've actually already talked about, so I'll go ahead and remind you what it is. And that is the pimple idiom or the pointer to implementation. And that's the idea if I have some class here like this character class here. And we'll go ahead and say that we have some things here like a constructor. Let's just go ahead and call it character. Maybe some other member functions. Again, the destructor, copy constructor, move constructor, move assignment, all those different things here that we might want to implement here if we're allocating memory. And then of course we would have some attributes here. Maybe our name, maybe the agility of this character, maybe their speed, all these different attributes. Now, again, if we just have these visible here from our character, well, then our client in a way has access. Even if we're just making these private, they might extend this class or you know do all sorts of weird stuff here. So we've in a way exposed these. So we use the pointer to implementation or the pimple idiom to basically get rid of these. And what we would do is instead create a type here, uh, and I'm just going to make up uh, a name for it. So this will be the pointer to the implementation of, you know, character. And somewhere else we would have some class here that would be called, you know, pointer to implementation. Again, we'd give it a better name like pointer to implementation of character or something like that in this particular instance. I'll just leave it as this. And then this is where we would actually put in name, our speed, agility, and so on. Now, why we actually do this again is it makes this part of our API more stable. It's more stable in the sense that, well, the actual size of this structure is always just going to be one pointer here. So that's actually really clean for us because we can make an assumption, say if we have a vector, standard vector of character, for instance, and we push back 10 characters, we know that's just gonna be the size of whatever 10 uh, pointers are on your particular architecture if that's the only member function here. And again, we get that advantage of being able to hide some information by being able to put this implementation into a dot, say, CPP file where we have these actual implementation details. So they're not exposed to the actual client. And that kind of signals to the client, hey, don't modify this code unless you know what you're actually doing if they don't have the source code or even if they do. So that's one that I really like to use, this pointer to implementation idiom here or pimple. The other one that I really like using, and again, can sort of future-proof your code, is passing in structs of options. So let me go ahead and give an example. Let's say that you have some free function that you're writing, for instance. So let's go ahead and call this uh, log, or maybe a better uh, example would be print data. And I don't know, maybe you have a game of some sorts and you want to pass in a bunch of information into this data field. Now there's a bunch of different ways that we could do this, but one way to actually handle this would just be to pass in some struct that you call options. And then again, you just call ops or something like this. Now again, you've probably seen this pattern used in various uh, code bases, and this could be again a decent way to sort of future proof yourself without having to add a bunch of different arguments to this particular print data function or just write a bunch of them. In fact, what you could do is just have print data, take in options, and then you can always update this particular struct later on as you need to. Again, I'm sort of deferring the problem or where the data lives elsewhere in order to handle this situation. And in this case, what I'm sort of future proofing against this idea of just packing everything into options is if you have an actual client that again is calling this print options uh, or print data uh, with the different options in it, you know, we're not just changing all of the function calls by adding in parameters or having to worry about adding a bunch of defaults on here uh, as time goes on and worry about user setting them. It's all stored within this option struct. Now we might have to actually change the actual code in print data to sort of update the actual uh, struct and how and, and to ensure that all of the 
uh, fields of this struct uh, that are being passed in are actually updated. But as far as changing or tweaking uh, code on the actual client side, it should just do the right thing as far as how they're actually using this, right? They're just passing in the same options structure that they previously had to. Now, of course, you might have to communicate again some information about how this structure has changed or what uh, additions you've made. But again, you're typically just making one change um, for uh, the actual client code uh, that's being passed in here. And again, not having to maintain lots of different versions of say this print data function. So those are two of my tips here for designing APIs to make them a little bit more stable. Pimple and this idea of passing around options structs. And I think it'll be an interesting experiment for you to do to actually go into some open source code repos and to see if you actually see these uh, idioms or this sort of design being used. And if they're not, is that code base perhaps using some other way to future-proof their code, or maybe that's a signal that the code base really isn't thinking about how long this code's gonna live, which is a really important part of software design to sort of think about how long or how important are these structures. And typically projects can last more than you think, especially if you're doing development on them. It's not always easy to just throw away an entire code base and restart from scratch. You have to think about some of these design decisions and eventually who's consuming your actual software as time goes on. So so I hope these were some useful tips here. This was just a short little video on some API design tips and some things that you can start implementing your code base, especially if you're trying to write a project that you think is going to last a little bit longer in its actual duration. Or again, if you're working with multiple teammates, some things that you might want to discuss on an actual project for how you're going to sort of future-proof your code and make it more stable for yourself and your actual clients. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson, folks. If you did, make sure you subscribe so that you can see more coming in this C++ series. And as always, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.